We're going to come back to Mississippi. We've got some breaking news concerning Paul Manafort and Robert Mueller's probe. According to new reporting from the New York Times, Manafort's attorney has been briefing the president's lawyers about his meetings with the special counsel's team. The report claims Manafort's lawyer repeatedly briefed President Trump's legal team on his client's discussions with federal investigators even after Manafort agreed to cooperate with the special counsel. That's according to one of Mr. Trump's lawyers and two other people familiar with the conversations. According to the report, Rudy Giuliani, one of the president's personal lawyers, acknowledged the arrangement on Tuesday and defended it as a source of valuable insight into the special counsel's inquiry and where it was headed. Giuliani said in one example that Manafort's lawyer had told him prosecutors hammered away at whether the president knew about the infamous June 2016 Trump Tower meeting. Quote, he wants Manafort to incriminate Trump, Mr. Giuliani declared of Mr. Mueller. This news comes just one day after we learned the special counsel wants to scrap Manafort's plea deal, claiming the former Trump campaign chairman had repeatedly lied to investigators, a claim Manafort denies. Let's bring NBC News Investigations producer Anna Schechter. She has new reporting on the focus of the special counsel's probe and interviewed a main player in the investigation, Jerome Corsi, yesterday. We'll get to that development in just a moment. Anna, good morning. We want to get to the Corsi interview that you conducted yesterday. Uh, but first, this development about Manafort's attorneys, even after he struck the plea deal, going back and talking to President Trump's lawyers and basically briefing him and filling them in on what Mueller was after. Well, I think this speaks directly to what we've known for a long time, which was that this a pardon was really what Manafort was looking for. And this just bolsters that. It's just clear that that was the plan from day one, and it continued even after those plea negotiations uh, began. So. Manafort had to know that Mueller was going to find out one way or another, right? That he was going back and his attorneys talking to the president's attorneys. So is that all he was going for was the pardon because he knows he's been incriminated in some way? And so now his only way out of this thing is to help President Trump through it. Well, it certainly appears that way, that that's what he was going for. Mike, what do you think as you listen to this? It's pretty astounding to see a guy who's agreed to a plea deal, yeah. right? He's already agreed to it to cooperate, to do just the opposite and work with the president's side. Yeah, it's, it, it's fairly common uh, in, in cases where you have several defendants on a joint indictment that their lawyers communicate with one another. It's highly unusual for someone who has cut a, free, a plea deal and separated themselves from other defendants to continue cooperating like that. The interesting question, Anna, to, I think, not only to me but to others, is how close do they come to witness tampering? In, in this case. I mean, it's kind of extraordinary. That's a great question, but we've seen Rudy Giuliani do these bizarre things, yeah. and he continues to say, well, there was nothing illegal about it. So that argument keeps coming up, and here is yet another example of that. But Anna, is the pardon really the end game here? I, I just feel like there's something else missing because if you read a lot of the coverage around this, Manafort faces all kinds of crimes from which Trump cannot protect him, like money laundering and financial crimes, that there's something missing here in terms of why Manafort would take this risk of lying to the special prosecutor. You don't lie to Mueller because you get caught. So what is it do you think that is missing here in the big picture? Mr. Manafort is in a world of hurt. This is, he is in hot water. And prosecutors can throw so much, probably throw so much more at him. They've already thrown so much at him. So it's really unclear what his strategy is. I mean, he's, he's a desperate person at this point. So he could be going for anything, but it does seem that currying favor with President Trump is his top priority at this point. We're getting some new details about what Roger Stone Associate Jerome Corsi allegedly knew about the massive Democratic email dump by WikiLeaks. NBC News has obtained draft court papers prepared by special counsel Robert Mueller that lays out information he has on Corsi. Included in that document are emails from Corsi to Stone seeming to anticipate the information dump by WikiLeaks. In one email from early August of 2016, Corsi writes, Word is friend in embassy plans two more dumps, referring to WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange, adding, one shortly after I'm back, second in October, impact planned to be very damaging. Corsi also wrote to Stone, time to let more than Clinton campaign chairman John Podesta to be exposed as in bed with enemy if they are not ready to drop Hillary Rodham Clinton. 
That appears to be the game hackers are now about. In the court papers, Mueller's team said Corsi scrubbed his computer between mid-January and early March of last year, deleting all email correspondence that predated October 11, 2016, including the messages with Stone about WikiLeaks. Speaking with NBC News yesterday, Corsi said he guessed about the Podesta email dump and just happened to be right. I believe these Podesta emails would destroy Hillary. Now, why did I think they were coming out in October? Because I said to myself, if I had these emails, I'd use them as the October surprise. But you didn't know that at the time, did this you? This is speculation. Well, I'm you didn't exactly out. tell, you didn't exactly write to him that it would be drip by uh, drip. Yes. No, I, I did, though, explain that to him. There were some phone That's conversations I had with him. Which so I you made. essentially told Stone exactly what was going to happen? Yes. What I told the special prosecutor was I thought I was giving Roger a cover story. In other words, I was allowing him to have an alternative explanation mm -hmm. for why he said the Podesta is going to be in the barrel based on my research on Podesta. That so you were telling him that he could use this story even absolutely. if it wasn't true? Absolutely. The court papers also show Mueller sent Corsi a draft plea agreement. It stipulated that the special counsel would not oppose Corsi requesting a sentence of probation if he agreed to plead guilty to one count of lying to federal investigators. As NBC News has reported, Corsi says he rejected the deal. All right, Anna, so that's your interview. A lot to plow through there. But I want to take a quick step back just for our viewers. And explain who Jerome Corsi is. He's an author, a conspiracy theorist, one of the godfathers of the birther movement, and why he's significant to this Russia story. Well, that's right. He created this myth that President Barack Obama was not born in the United States, and he maintains that to this day. He's written 20 books on other conspiracy theories. He goes after Democrats. He considers himself an opposition researcher, an investigative journalist, and Democrats are his target. And it seems to me he just cannot help himself with a conspiracy theory. Even speaking with him yesterday, he was telling me that he didn't think that the Russians were actually behind the DNC email hacks, despite multiple intelligence agencies saying so. So what is his relationship then to WikiLeaks? Why would he be a conduit between Julian Assange and Roger Stone and eventually to the Trump campaign? Jerome Corsi was in this inner circle of far-right people, Roger Stone, Jerry Corsi, and then also to the left, characters like Randy Credico, who were desperate to find out exactly what Julian Assange had. And Corsi told me yesterday he would have been happy to get on a plane, fly to London, go to the Ecuadorian embassy to meet with Assange and hear exactly what he had. And he would have happily given all of that to Stone. He just says he didn't do that. He says he didn't have advanced knowledge, despite what those emails well, I was going to say, how does he explain those emails? Because those are very explicit. They yeah. are explicit. And specific. He says he read the July 22nd email dump, the first DNC email dump, noticed that there were very few John Podesta emails in that load of emails and deduced that the October surprise was going to be John Podesta's email. I'm seeing a lot of skepticism on faces around this yeah. table. I looked at him and I, well, prosecutors were extremely skeptical as well. And were sent, he told me they were essentially laughing at him. Uh, Jeannie Ree, one of the prosecutors, said, so you're telling me that you were on a plane going to Italy with your wife for your 25th anniversary and God just told you that this is what happened. And he said, yes. From the emails, he's ordering Corsi here. Let's just read this one from July 25th. He says, get to, uh, air quotes, Assange at Ecuadorian Embassy in London and get the pending WikiLeaks That's emails. Stone to Corsi. That's Stone, Stone to Corsi, Roger right. Stone to Corsi. Um, and then word is two dumps, very damaging. None of this was public information. In terms of the definition of collusion then, let's just remind people that it was, you know, weeks later, that these WikiLeaks emails were sent out in a very coordinated, highly effective fashion just within hours of the Access Hollywood tapes. And that then, again, just to, to remind people who are old enough to remember, the president used WikiLeaks to maximum effect yes. within the final closing weeks of the campaign. So what is the remaining question here about collusion? Simply what the president knew? Because we have a pretty clear 
idea here from the emails well, the, of what was going on with everyone around him. With there's the burden of proof of showing that members of the Trump campaign actually knew about it. Now, Corsi told me he assumed that Stone would have passed that information on. He doesn't think that's illegal. He would have hoped that he, he passed that information on. Stone, of course, says he had uh, no advanced knowledge of exactly what WikiLeaks was going to do, that he did learn things from Randy Credico, but that he did not collude in any way. And his lawyers told me he's actually not worried about this part of it. There's a couple of things to take from, from Anna's interview with Corsi and who Corsi is. First of all, the baseline on Corsi is he is a guy who believes the moon landing was staged, yeah. that it was fake. Okay. The second thing is he's been around for years, as Anna just alluded to. I mean, he was behind the swift boating episodes yeah. with John Kerry. Yep. InfoWars? Was he behind InfoWars? He worked for InfoWars. He was the Washington yeah. bureau and, chief of and, InfoWars. And off of this interview, you could indict him as soon as the lights went off <laughs> on the interview, okay? That's how limited the guy really is. The guy is totally irrational, but the important point is he... Roger Stone and others are the kinds of people around Donald Trump. That's the most important point, I, I think. That's a great point. I think that's an, I do think that's an important point. <laughs> Let's not forget, uh, these are con men and, and, yes. and but. Grifters. Mm -hmm. Corsi, I don't think Corsi's irrational actually. I mean, I don't, I don't know him, but my, my sense of him is, is he peddles in an industry and the industry is conspiracy. Mm. And when you peddle in conspiracy, you write things that lend people to believe in conspiracy. And I don't know whether he connected with Assange or not. My, my idea is probably he didn't. But he, they hit, they, in a way, they hit the, the jackpot, although this one is, <laughs> they, they also turned up the, the death card here. Um, and it just happens to match because you, if you read the emails, it's all that conspiracy language. It's it isn't specific. It talks about uh, dumps, uh, you know, email dumps, and, and these are going to be damaging. But it doesn't really say what he's dumping. He doesn't. Really, no one really knows. And then it comes out. But all the language is that, that conspiracy language. You can go online and watch those hour-long conspiracy documentaries. I don't recommend it, but it's, just, it's hysterically funny if you're not s prone to conspiracy theories like the president is. So I, I don't know. I don't know. How do you interview someone like this? These people, that n none of them can tell the truth. I don't know. How do you know what to believe? That's a great question. I've spent <laughs> a long time with uh, Jerry Corsi over the past uh, month. Uh, talking to him multiple times and I have to say what is astonishing to me is that the court papers back up what he's been telling me all along in terms of specific to what prosecutors were doing with his lawyer, the negotiations, the timing of the plea negotiations. So there has been that grain of truth throughout. So it was fantastic to get these court documents, which is really unusual, and we could see exactly the government's case, what they were laying out against him. And what, what they're getting him on, what they're trying to get him to plea to, is that in his first meeting in September with investigators, that he lied to them. He said he didn't remember any of these emails, that he totally, and he maintains that, of course, to me. He says, I didn't even look at the 2016 emails. Once they presented him a week later with a binder eight inch thick of all his communications and said, well, what about this email? Stone was urging urging you to go to the embassy, urging you to get their London uh, far-right writer friend to go because it was easier to get some guy in London to go. And Corsi actually forwarded the email mm. to the guy in London to get him to go to the Ecuadorian embassy. They say there's no way that you could have forgotten all of those emails. That's what this is based. The government's case against him is based on. You touched on something important a minute ago, though, which is that Robert Mueller is looking at collusion. And these emails are intriguing and they're fascinating. But has Bob Mueller, to, to the extent you've heard from Jerome Corsi or other people you've talked to, made a connection from Roger Stone and Jerome Corsi, who can say we're free agents, we're mercenaries, we were working outside the campaign on his behalf, he didn't know what we were doing exactly. Have they made a connection to the Trump campaign, which is what they would have to do to find collusion? The court papers show that that hasn't happened yet. Now, Mueller might have that, but 
they're trying to get him to plea to lying to investigators, not to colluding with right. WikiLeaks and transferring that information to the Trump campaign. So we're not there yet. But we really don't know everything that Mueller has. This could have been a game plan. Hey, you've got to plead guilty that, to this. They might have a lot more on Corsi that we don't know about. You so think? it remains to be seen. <laughs> Fascinating interview. The whole thing's going to be on NBCNews.com yep. with Jerome Corsi. Great work, Anna. Thanks. Good to Thanks see you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.